I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. Also, uh, a couple of John. I mean, you probably know who. Uh, maybe you do. Phil. A couple of female bodybuilders apparently have died. Uh, I've heard. Yes. Yeah. Again, yeah. weren't old. One woman was forty-nine. I remember. I think it was a, you know, and and, uh, and then I saw. Yeah. Uh, One girl was. Uh, I think her name was. Uh, I wrote it down. Lena Kosanova from the Czech yeah. Republic. She was forty-six. There was also yeah. a girl named who died a couple months ago. Sophia Graham who was twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Wow. Yeah. Now, come on now, you know, for crying out loud, uh, do you know what she died from, John? Do you know? I think that was pre-contest, so, you know, probably diuretics, yeah. Okay. I mean, women, pre-menopausal pre pre women are practically immune from heart, heart disease because the higher estrogen levels, like I said, it, it maintains their artery suppleness or maintains the HDL. For a woman at 27 to die, she had to do something very wrong. Yeah. Probably diuretics, something like that. You know, uh, but, but, uh, you know. Here, did you ever hear what Matt Mendenhall died of? No, I, I never heard. I, I, I never know. heard either, because he died several months ago, but I don't think they ever said what it was. He you wasn't know. that old either. How old was he? 61. He's 61, yeah. He wasn't that old. I mean, you know. No. But I mean, uh, I mean, I saw another girl in a video where, you know, she was describing, I think I talked about this, John, she was describing her drug regime. And now, get this, she was so weak that when she was interviewed, she was lying down and looking up. She couldn't even sit up. Mm. And she had, she was mentioning the, the drug regime that her coach gave her. Right. And she mentioned that she had permanent heart damage and would probably need a heart transplant. Wow. Right. When I heard that, my jaw dropped. I, I mean, this is not an old woman. Is she still competing or she was done? I think she's done, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But the next statement is what really blew my mind. The guy who was interviewing this says, well, you, you know, what do you think of that coach who told you to uh, take this, uh, this thing that just wrecked your health? She said, oh, I have nothing against him. We're still good friends. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Wow. What? what? Wow. Lady, are you freaking crazy? Yeah. This guy almost killed you. You know, you know, and her defense of him was, and this is another winning statement. Well, you know, he didn't force me to take it. I took it on my own, so I can't really be mad at him. Right. Yeah, but you trusted him. Yeah. You trusted him that it would get you in shape without causing permanent damage to your health. Yeah. I said, you're taking the responsibility from him. You're out of your mind, lady, is all I'd say, you know? Hmm. Wow. You know, I I've been in this sport for 40 years myself, and- I noticed the huge difference between like back in the day, no one ever discussed steroids. No, no one talked about them. And now with the internet, I guess, I, I mean, Rich Piana, right. was probably the first one to yeah. come out and just talk about them openly. And I think that's what was part of his popularity was yeah. people like, Oh, I love this guy because he's honest right. and everybody's been lying about drug use for years. Here's a guy who's finally honest about it. But now it seems like, People don't have any problem saying, hey, what do you take? What do you take? You know, and there's no, there's like, nobody has to say any, I mean, everybody has to be transparent about everything now because it's on the internet, you know? And so people openly talk about them. Does that make it uh, more like easier to take them or, or more acceptable to take them? You know what I mean? Oh, I don't oh, know. And I'll tell you something that's interesting about Piana. I think you'll, uh, you guys will confirm this. If you ever looked at some, I used to watch his videos just for the hell of it. You know, I didn't watch them all, but occasionally. And I noticed he, he ended up wanting to change. When he first started doing the videos, like you said, John, he was very open about steroid use. He talked about various types of steroids, yeah. their, their, their qualities, what they do, supposedly. But somewhere along the line, and I think it's because uh, he apparently did some sort of market survey where he found out that the majority of his viewers, now when Rich would put on a video on YouTube, within one day, I looked at his numbers, because I was doing videos myself. When I would put a video, I'd be lucky to get 900 views the next day, if I was lucky. Mm. When he put on a video, the next day, he had 250,000 views, the wow. same amount of time. Wow. In a day. 
in a day. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, who is watching it? Then, then the answer came. Most of his viewers were between 18 and 22 years of age, right? Mm -hmm. And it made sense to me because I, I analyzed, I said, why would these young guys like really look at this guy? First of all, he was giving out the information on the drugs. That was one motivator. He was giving out the secrets. They thought it was the secret. Yeah. The big like him. Second of all, think back, Phil and John, when you were young. What would you think if you saw a guy like that with arms the size of a freaking tree trunk? You'd say, yeah. wow, yeah. I want to get arms like that guy. <laughs> right. I'm going to watch him. Maybe he'll tell me how he got those huge arms. He's gigantic. Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so it was young kids. Now, to his credit, and I never got to know Piano, but I met him a couple of I never, never knew him really. But to his credit, his later videos, if you look at him, he took, he went in the opposite direction. Hmm. His philosophy changed when he started to say, look, he says, I've been very forthcoming about steroid use. But the truth of the matter is, if you're not going to compete, if you have no intentions of competing, you have no business and you're an idiot if you use steroids. Hmm. He said it just like that. Change of heart. Kind of training because he realized uh -huh. that he wasn't a bad guy. He realized that these kids who looked up to him, Turn you know, are going to follow him, and if they use the drugs that he talked about in the past, like Tremolo and some of these other, they're going to get really screwed up. Yeah. I mean, maybe even yeah. die. So he was a nice enough guy to try and, the last couple of, the, what was it, yeah, year or two, he was literally anti-steroid, anti-growth. He said, there's no reason to take it if mm -hmm. you're not compete, you know, which was, uh, that was nice of him, you know. I'll tell you guys a story. I trained with Samir. I lived with Samir. In 81, I moved to California, and he let me stay with him for four to six weeks. I believe it was about six weeks until I found a place. Wait a minute. Before you go on, Phil, today uh, is today's Samir's birthday. Yeah, today's birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Samir. Yeah, I, I <laughs> sent him a uh, happy yeah. birthday uh, yeah. Go ahead, text. Bro. Yeah. And I was with him, spent time with him. We got to know each other very well. I lived in this apartment with him for about six weeks. Another guy, Ali Mala, I was a workout that. partner for a while, right? Yeah. I trained with Ray Mincer for a time. I got to know Mike real well. The story, I mean, the subject of steroids never came up. Wow. We never talked about it. I mean, there was an opportunity to probably. Sure. I never brought it up and they never mentioned it. Yeah. We talked about training. We talked about eating, this and that. But the subject never, never came up. Hmm. So they were really... They used it where it needed to be used, right? right? But they weren't like, uh, I mean, they didn't glorify it in any way. Right. Yeah. It was just something you had to do, yeah. and that was it. And like I said, it was never discussed. Yeah. You know, when, when the guys would get together in the 70s, just to confirm what you're saying, Phil, you know, Arnold and all those guys, you know, back to the original goal, uh, I've been out with these guys a lot. I, I don't remember any, any time, at w even one time, that the discussion turned out where well, they started talking about steroids. I never ever heard that once. So was no, that because it wasn't a big part of the protocol, or because well, they were just discussed? Well, they, they weren't glorified. They weren't glorified, yeah. and I don't think they, these guys put as much emphasis no. on steroids as the guys do today. In other words, the guys today would look at large doses of steroids as absolutely essential. You know, whereas back in those days, as Bill points out. Steroids are more of a tool to be used in conjunction with hard training and good right. nutrition. They yeah. weren't the be all and end all of bodybuilding success. Today, it's reversed. Absolutely. Where today, where steroids are number one, and the training and diet are a vast. Take a second. Take a uh, back seat to that. Take a back exactly. seat to the yeah. It's reversed, and this is a very dangerous trend because these people have this idiotic notion that you can get away with taking large doses of steroids and not pay a price. Bullshit. A, a, a tenant of pharmacology, there's an old saying, a uh, guy, Paris Secret, said this God knows how many centuries ago, only the dose determines the poison. You know, in, in mm. other words, when you, you, you can't take large doses of something and not, especially, you know, for extended times and not expect to pay a price sooner or later. Absolutely. If you're lucky, you'll live. If you're not, well, you know, you know, you see what happens, you know. Yeah, well, this is what's happening. Well, it yeah. seems like every decade, well, it's competition, right? So the competition gets harder and harder, and then everybody's forced to do more and more and more. More right? and more. 
I'll tell you what I think. There's one that, you know, you say to me, if you say to me, well, what can be done about this? What can we, what can we do to maybe help protect these bodybuilders who are going to take these drugs? There's no freaking drug testing. It's all bullshit. I mean, yeah. they don't, the, 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 I'll say it. I don't care. I'm not involved in any magazine. The, the, the governing bodies of bodybuilding, they don't give two shits about these guys' health. They don't give a fuck. The guy who owns all the magazines, he, he, he talks big, but he's not doing anything to help ensure the health of these bodybuilders. They got the money to do it. They should institute some sort of medical testing program where, and I'm not talking about off-season steroid tests. That's good too. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you, you know they're not going to test these guys. We talked about this before, John. Remember what happened in the 90 Olympia? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they tried the drug testing one year and supposedly the guys didn't look in top shape and the powers that be that ran bodybuilding said no more because if the guys don't look freaky, we're going to lose the fans and this and that. Yeah. So yeah. forget about drug testing at cons. It's not going to happen. So what you can do is institute some sort of year-round, not just before a show, year-round medical testing program where the guys and the women undergo tests, like, for example, calcium, uh, 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 what is it called? Calcium scanning of the arteries, which is an early sign of, we can predict uh, an impending heart attack or stroke, various blood tests. I Honestly, it might sound crazy. I think it should be done once a month. In other words, if these people- are They're gonna be able to do that with all the competitors? They'd have that's to, the but that's the only way to yeah. do it. Because if these people are gonna stay, as you say, John, if they're going to stay on large doses year round, you better test them every month. Because I personally believe whether a governing body or the athletes themselves pay for it, it has to be done. Because if you don't do that, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. And you could wind up like Sean Roden, any of these. And again, I'm not saying that Sean, steroids killed Sean Roden. What I'm saying is if you take the high dose drugs all around, you don't know what's going on inside you unless you get checked. And if you get checked, and something shows up that you're heading for a brick wall, it gives you a chance to get off the stuff and save your freaking life. You know, yeah. otherwise, if they keep doing this, it's going to happen as, a, as oh, Phil says. This is going to continue. Over. It's just going to continue. You know, you, you mentioned that 1990 Olympia, and we've talked about that many times. And uh, like you said, the guys, well, first of all, there was no foolproof test for testing everybody. If they, if they had a foolproof test, I could see them going forward with it. <clears throat> but the other thing was, which is a, a thing that people kind of forget about what happened at that year, was that was the year the WBF was being formed. Right. And Tom Platts showed up at that 1990 Olympia yeah. and he was the recruiter and he was going out and trying to get all the guys to join the WBF, which started the next year. Mm-hmm. And I think, I'm not sure, but maybe the IFBB's one of the reasons the IFBB decided to not do the drug testing was because I heard that Tom Platts was telling the guys, hey, you won't have to worry about this drug testing crap. You guys can get as big and freaky as you want. Which was ironic because what happened was a couple of years later, they did end up drug testing them. Drug testing, yeah. But I always thought maybe the IFBB would say, whoa, if we start drug testing and our guys are downsized and the fans don't like that, and then some other rival organization starts up and says, wait, we're not doing drug testing. We're going to give you guys what you want. We're going to give these guys, they're going to be big and freaky. Yeah. There goes the IFBB, and then the other organization is going to take over. That's, That's probably that, true. That could have entered into it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That could have been, but the, the, the bottom line is that, you know, these these guys are, are uh, playing Russian roulette, and the women. So they're listening to these uh, so-called coaches who have no yeah. medical background, don't really know the, the uh, pharm- you know the pharmacology of these drugs. And worst of all, they don't know what to do if a problem does come up. Yeah. They, they don't have the medical background. Right. You know, like, like, let's say that, uh, you know, and it, it probably still happens occasionally, like what happened to Phil and Mike Monterazzo. Let's say they take a potassium sparing drug and the coach tells them to, you know, pump in the potassium at the same time and they start to get all screwed up. I mean, does the coach know what to do? He better, otherwise yeah. the person could die. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Well, you know, I did I did an interview with Lee Labrada years ago, and we were yeah. talking about the 1990 Olympia, and he was all in favor of it. And he said, you know, I know that first year it was kind of an experiment, and some of the guys, you know, didn't look as good, and that was the main complaint was the competitors didn't look as good. But he goes, if they would have stuck with it, the guys would have learned 
to deal with doing maybe less drugs. Maybe they weren't, they, maybe they weren't all drug free. Maybe they just got by enough to pass the test or whatever. Sure. But they would, it, it would have been, led to a better sport, he thinks. And it also would have led to better sponsorships. You know, everybody complains about the money. There's not enough money in bodybuilding. You know, he said, well, if, if you guys want a sport like this, then expect it lower money because you're not going to get the sponsors. You're not going to get the big sponsors. The big corporate sponsors aren't, aren't going to put millions of dollars on. I was watching something on TV the other day, women's rodeo, and they were talking about millions of dollars for women's rodeo. <laughs> I'm like, man. If you go to England and you and you throw darts, dart players make more money than bodybuilders. Yeah. And that's no joke. I, I remember one a beer in one hand and a dart in the other. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one year. You remember how Ben Weeder with like his big passion in life? Guys, again, bodybuilding in the in Olympics. The Olympics. Yeah. I remember one year, I mean, he used to schmooze all these Olympic officials, hang out with them and give them money, you know, to, you know, to try and get. He thought that bodybuilding getting the Olympics would give a certain amount of respectability mm -hmm. to bodybuilding that it didn't have. Because, you know, body to the average person on the street, you know, they saw the guys with baby oil and trunks and they thought these were guys with freaks and, you know, whatever. You know, he felt that the Olympics, getting the Olympics, which is the upper echelon of sport, would give a certain level of respectability to bodybuilding. But, you know, and he came close to it one year. But, and, and he started, and what he did was he instituted drug testing right. regularly in the amateur division, like the world championship. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember, uh, what was it, 87? Where, 86. Was the it 86? Year, Jerry, 86, because I was in 85. Okay. And they started drug testing the next year. Next okay. year, yeah. Uh, wasn't, wasn't Ralph Mueller, if I remember, had gotten fourth in, in the show? Correct. And the three guys ahead of all got busted. Yeah, just <laughs> right, you know, yeah. right. He wound up winning, you know what I mean? So yeah. you, know, you had that type of thing. But so what happened was he was just this far away. It's the truth. He was, they actually made an announcement. Do you hmm. remember that? They were going to put bodybuilding in as a, as a so-called spectator sport, yeah. which is the first step to becoming an official Olympic sport. Right. It was the first step. But what happened was at the last minute, it was, it fell through. But at the same time, this is what, this is what I'm leading up to. It's going to make you laugh. What was approved as a spectator sport for the Olympics was hula hoop. <laughs> <laughs> hula hoop's probably in the Olympics. Am I right? Yeah, yeah I think it is. There, there you go. In other words, they wouldn't want bodybuilding where guys literally and women knock themselves out. Right. I mean, it's, I mean really, it's, it's one of the toughest things you do because, yeah. you know, but they allow somebody to take a plastic hoop and <laughs> swing it around, which doesn't take much skill at all. That made it as an Olympic spectator sport, but right. bodybuilding was out. And to this day, there's no bodybuilding of any kind in the Olympics. They don't speak of it anymore. They, they no, no longer speak of it. Nothing. Right. Yeah, exactly. it, the the bodybuilding is so tainted with steroid use that that the Olympic officials, if you, oh. if you approach, I can imagine approaching, uh, let's say one of these guys on the uh, International Olympic Committee, sir, sir, would you consider, consider body? You go like, he's the like, killer. <laughs> you probably run away down the street. He wouldn't even talk to you. Yeah, you got to give Ben credit though for trying to make it legitimate, yeah. a legitimate yeah. sport. Yeah. No, I do give him credit, but can you imagine, imagine what if these bodybuilding, I mean, the Olympic officials, you know, you go up to them and say, well, you know, bodybuilding is, that we're trying to clean up the sport. Here, let me show you a picture of the current Mr. Olympia. And they show, <laughs> they show. Right. <laughs> Look at it. Case well, the, the Olympics, I, I think the Olympics doesn't have the prestige it used to have either, you know. Well, that's, that's true too. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. Like it did in the 70s and 80s. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I tell you, I, I I tried to watch some of the recent Olympics, and most of it bored the shit out of me. Yeah, the last one. Yeah, it wasn't very exciting at all. You know. But uh, you know, so so isn't it really all up to the competitors themselves on how far they want to take this? Absolutely, that's right. No, no one's forcing you to do it. So right, yeah, right. absolutely. But you know what the attitude of a lot of the competitors are. Do you remember the famous statement, Phil, you remember this, it was made by Tom Platts, the same Tom Platts. They said to him, if you could uh, be the greatest bodybuilder, win Mr. Olympia, but drop dead the next day, 
you know, if you took something that would make you the greatest body below Mr. Olympia, but it, but it caused you to drop dead the next day, would you do it yet? Without hesitation, yes. Yeah. At that's that time, right. I believe that. Right. And they've also asked Olympic athletes over the years. Yeah. You could do anything to be a, a great athlete. Let's say the, in the Olympics, for example, and it took 10 years off your life, would you do it? They all said yeah. yes. That's right. Yeah. That's true. But, you know, you know the, the attitude... If you, if you, uh, of a lot of the top guys, as far as the drug use goes, uh, they think it's something that they need to do because they said the way human beings are, they always, there's always an in, inborn need to progress, to go forward. In other words, uh, in bodybuilding or pro bodybuilding mainly, it would be, I would translate into being bigger and bigger and bigger. In other words, so. You know, Big Ramey is big, you know, but there'll probably be guys down the line that, remember, he's only 5'10", uh, Big yeah. Ramey. I mean, what if a guy comes along who's 6'3", has sure. a bigger structure than Ramey, and now, you know, Ramey competes at 300. This guy's on stage at 370. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, my point is, where will it end? Right. In you the know? graveyard, Jerry. Yeah. I mean, in the graveyard. Yeah. I mean, I, I get a picture of, uh, if this shit heats up, I mean, I get a picture of, of watching a pro show where suddenly, you know, they're standing on stage and three of the guys suddenly fall to the stage, dead on stage. How's that going to help the popularity? I remember Bill Pro told me that years ago, like 20, 30 years ago. He said, he goes, one day, he goes, somebody's going to drop dead on stage. Oh, I've, seen, I've seen it come close. That's I, happened. I, 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 uh, I was at a contest years ago uh, I was sitting with Tom Dieters, remember, who was uh, also working for Weeder, and we were watching these guys. They were lined up on stage. You guys remember a big uh, uh, body bullet from New Jersey named Johnny Moran? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I was looking at the guys, and we were, you know, my, my eyes were scanning up and down the line of all the guys, you know, competing. And then suddenly, I, I, uh, Dieters and I at the same time focused on Johnny Moran. Because he started to sway. Oh, he yeah. to go like this, right? Remember and, that. And he was standing at the edge of the top platform. If he would have passed out, he would have smashed into the ground. His head would have probably hit the wooden platform. Yeah. Might have, might have killed himself. Yeah. So I nudged Dieters, you know, and I said, Dieters, look at Johnny, man. He's about to pass out. We got to do something. So just out of like a dramatic scene in the movie, Dieters and I rushed up. And we grabbed, and we, we, we actually caught Johnny Moran about two seconds before he's about to fall all down a, a, off the stage. Wow. And we, we brought him back. And yeah. luckily, you know, he was, he turned, he was okay. We, he was totally dehydrated. You know, we gave him some water. About 20 minutes later, he was okay. But I'm saying that, you know, this thing can happen. You know, you never, you know, that was in front of a whole crowd. The guy could have passed out right on stage. Yeah. yeah. I've been backstage at contests where I, I used to, uh, when I used to go to the nationals, I had a habit of interviewing just about everybody in the contest. I do little short interviews. I, I've seen at least 10 different occasions where bodybuilders passed out. Sure. Backstage. Come backstage. Yeah. You ever see that, Phil? They passed out. Oh, yeah. Out. yeah it's, it became common. Yeah. 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 I was talking to a guy in interview and I was saying, so how did, uh, did you do anything? I always had the standard question. Did you do anything, especially if they had competed like before? I'd say, well, did you do anything different in preparation for this year's contest? And I, I, I held the tape recorder, and suddenly the guy's eyes rolled back. <laughs> I, I should have left. And, and he fell flat on his back with his eyes rolled back in his head. Right. So I said, is that your answer? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> no, the guy, again, it was a diuretic thing. The guy had overdid it. Yeah. Died, you know, the, but luckily he was okay. He didn't die or anything like that. But you know, these uh, things happen. I mean, uh, in some way, bodybuilding has become a dangerous sport. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm writing now an article for my news that even as we speak, I'm writing an article on how steroids affect the brain. And I had a couple of eye-opening things. Like, for example, just to give you one example, you, you know the fam the famous uh, ster uh, the famous steroid uh, Trenbolone, right? Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. is, which is not a commercial, it, it's a, basically a black market steroid. Has oh, really? Been, yeah, it hasn't been made by any pharmaceutical company in years, right? Huh. Well, it turns out trenbolone uh, causes uh, brain damage. Hmm. What it does is it, ca it, it, causes your, uh, it, it causes changes in your brain 
the same changes that occur with Alzheimer's disease. It causes the, uh, the buildup of these two abnormal proteins that are thought to be the cause of Alzheimer's and it starts right away. Now, I'm, honestly, they've only shown this in animal studies because to, to show this, you gotta basically take the brain out of the head. And there's not many people that would allow their brains to be removed, you know? Okay. Although, although in some cases, especially today, if you open up the head, you'll find that there's no brain to remove, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the thing is that, you know, I mean, people don't know this. I mean, the guy, Trenbolone happens to be one of the most popular steroids. Yeah. And, you know, these guys and these women or, or whatever, they're taking this stuff and, you know, it's not going to happen right away. But if you use this for a couple of years, you could be setting yourself up for, you know, where you get like some boxers get where after their career's over, where they get like a kind of dementia, you know, where it looks yeah. exactly like that. They could be screwing themselves up. So it causes brain damage, Jerry? It actually causes brain damage, wow. yeah. Wow. Now, it's, uh, and as I told somebody, I, I did another podcast and I, I mentioned this and I said, you know, if I was competing and I took steroids, I said, there's one steroid I would never touch and it's Trembolone. Wow. Never, never, I would never touch. And I, I, wrote, I wrote that. I, oh, no, I'm sorry. I said that in that interview. And you know what somebody wrote in the comments, John and Phil? You know what they wrote? No. They wrote, this guy's full of shit. <laughs> said, I'd use Trembolone for five years and there's nothing wrong with my brain. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we felt brain wrong. <laughs> hey, Jerry, let me ask you this. What was Trembolone called prior? Was there, was there a name for that drug? Well, Finijet and uh, oh, Finijet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I forget the other name, but it uh, also had I it. I heard of Finijet. Yeah, Finijet. Yes. Uh, that was the veterinary form. And there was, uh, there was two other forms. It was actually released very briefly as a human drug, but was it? I, I can't remember the exact uh, trade name it had. It, you know? it wasn't Parabolum, was it, Jerry? Actually, it, I think it was. Okay. It, it was Parabolum. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's wow. Right. That's right. Parabolum it was. You're right. right. Okay. That's, that's the, That was the trade name. You're right. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what it was. And, you know, this is recent stuff, guys. I mean, they didn't know this years ago about Tremble. Yeah. Yeah. All recent. And again, I'm not going to lie. Every study that has shown this has been animal studies, rats, various types of animals, you know. But the thing is, I mean, the structures that it affects in the rodent brains are the same that's found in human brains. So it's a very good chance. In fact, the neurologists that wrote these things that wrote these studies, at the end they said, you know, this is a, uh, you know, this we think this could also occur in human subjects, but obviously. It's unfortunately, you can't really test it because you'd have to open a person's head. Mm. So, like even Alzheimer's, if somebody dies of Alzheimer's disease, the only way to really know is during an autopsy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When they take the brain out. There's no other way of knowing. Yeah. And yeah. that's the same with this. So, you know, it's causing a subtle brain damage that wow. these guys don't know. So, you know, I mean. Uh, Did you guys hear the um, commentary of the Arnold Classic when Arnold was uh, joining the panel and he was doing the commentary? I did. Yeah, I heard some of it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, uh, let, remind me, what did he say, John? Well, he was talking about the classic physique, and he was kind of saying, you know, this is where the action is. That, that was the exact yeah. word. This is where the sport should go, is toward classic <laughs> physique, because he liked the way the guys looked. And he also said straight out, he goes, let's be honest. He goes, these guys don't have to do as many drugs as yeah. the other guys do. Yeah. And he goes, bodybuilding's the only sport where we're having more deaths. And he talked about MMA and he said, like the MMA had like two deaths in the last uh, yeah. five years. He goes, bodybuilders have had 20 deaths or I don't know what his numbers were. But, yeah. You know, I was surprised that he was that open. And even uh, Jake Wood, the guy who owns the Mr. Olympia, after one of those uh, female competitors died this year, he said, we need some changes in the judging standard. So they're not looking for such hardness which is going to cause these competitors to use such diuretics. Diuretics, yeah. yeah my, my question is, is he going to follow that through? Or is that just talk? Is he going to actually change the judges? Well, I, I don't know if they could really... The judges are going to not judge conditioning. I, I mean, it's yeah. it's like Pandora's box. It's like yeah. once right. we're used to a certain amount of conditioning, we're going to go backwards on it, you know? That's yeah. the problem. It's, it's easy to say, hard to do. You know, because yeah. Yeah. Like this, what are you going to do? Award the... Uh, a woman who uh, enters, like, let's say, ripped and shredded or whatever, uh, a woman who's smooth, you're going to give it to the smooth woman over the rip, you know, the, yeah. it's not going to go well with the audience. 
Yeah. They, they, they don't give a crap about the health. They want to see the what they consider the best person with. Well, I remember when, when women's physique started because I was doing some commentary for RX Muscle. And uh, when women's physique started, we would be looking at these competitors and be like, oh, that girl's too hard. She's too vascular. They're going to mark her down for that. And they were actually doing that. You know, yeah. so if you yeah. had, but now they don't do that anymore. Right? No, no, it completely slipped back. And my question is, now you mentioned that how Arnold said about the classic physique, right? Yeah. Which makes sense. I agree. But that harkens back to the way the physiques, you know, more symmetry, like like did they like what Phil looked like, you know, complete symmetry, right. head right. to toe body. But my question is, like, you know, there's always again this thing in the back of the mind of the competitors that they have to improve every year. Yeah. Right? Now, yeah. The classic, as you pointed out in a past uh, podcast we did, John, when I mentioned this, you said to me, it probably won't be a big problem for the classic because it's a weight limit. Yeah. Right. So these guys can't get too big because if they get yeah, too big, limited, yeah. you know what I mean? They're yeah. not going to, they're what, they kicked out or they can't compete. I don't know how it works, but they can't compete. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to. Yeah. But my question is, you know, what, what, what are these guys like going to do to improve every year if they can't get right. bigger? There's you know what I mean? Like, it, like, it affects the guys who are shorter more because they're limited on weight. You know, if you're taller, if you're six foot two, the weight is higher, obviously, because you're yeah. taller. Yeah, like the guy who just won, was it the third year or second year? Which is third year, Chris Bumstead. Yeah. Bumstead. yeah, I mean, he's a taller guy, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the other guys, has, uh, the other two guys he beat had as much quality muscle as him, but he gave the uh, appearance of being bigger than him. Yeah, that's I believe that played a large part in why he won. You know what I mean? Well, well Breon Ansley, who was the winner before Chris Bumstead, he's like my height. He's like five seven, five eight. So right. I think he's at the limit. So he's right. he actually looks great in the weeks before, but he's got to come down to make that weight. That's so right. it kind of flattens him out a little bit. So he's not really at his peak. Yeah, but we see a strange thing could happen there. In other words, they can't get too big as you said so they won't take let's say the program of a big rainy uh or one yeah. of those yeah because that would that would knock them out of the competition but what they can do is try and get harder and more ripped you know where you know so look at a guy like bumstead and mm -hmm. they say well, he's bigger than he has a bigger structure he's taller than me i uh the only way i could beat this guy is to come in like just supernaturally shredded right where, you know where i'm so cut that i'm almost painful to look at yeah. And have all the body parts, you know, in, in balance and symmetry. My question is, what are they going to do to get that look? Yeah. yeah. See, in yeah. other words, like, are they going to take like extra diuretics or, mm. or maybe resort to something like DNP, which mm. could kill you? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That'll kill you. That will yeah. kill you. That to me, I, I always say that's the single most dangerous drug in bodybuilding, uh, the second uh, followed by diuretics, because yeah. both of them can kill you in a snap of a finger. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that that's an unanswered question. What are these guys going to do? Because, you know, there's a challenge for them every year in all of bodybuilding, female divisions, they, yeah. they have to show some improvement to yeah. win every year. And what are they going to resort to? That's my question. So yeah. where do we go from here? Yeah, where do you go from here? Yeah. I, I, again, I hate to be redundant, but I don't have a good feeling about mm -hmm. the future of, of uh, especially the pro division. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, men and women. I mean, we're seeing little things going on here. People dying at a young age, and you know what's. I mean, this thing keeps up. What's going to happen? What are you going to get? Two people dying every month? Yeah. You know what? What's the answer? I know. What is the answer? Again, I think the only answer is if the if the if the if the uh, federations, whatever you want to call it, if they won't pay for for the medical testing, then the body bills will have to do it. You know, maybe yeah. get medical insurance. They got to monitor themselves, you know. And yeah, I'm not kind of, what kind of test should they do, Jerry? They should get they should get first of all a complete blood uh, panel, lipids, thyroid, liver panels, very important. Uh, and they should also, you know, maybe monitor certain tests that that might show up. Let's say early cancers. Uh, you know, every so often get a colonoscopy. No, you don't do that all the time. Maybe every five years or something like that. You know that you know basically the things that could turn bad real fast. I think having regular blood tests, uh, like like I said, calcium scans of the of the coronary artery, that would be a big help. Okay. That, that, that could prevent a lot of heart attacks. So you know that stuff. I mean, uh, I mean, again, it, it's you know I don't know how much of it will cover be covered by insurance, but 
you know, this is the price they'll have to pay if they insist on staying on, as you said, larger doses year round. Yeah. They, they're going to have to monitor. They're, they're going to get, they will get screwed up. I mm. guarantee it. They will get screwed up. Now, now, on the other hand, the men and women who get off the drugs, like we did in the old days, not me, I mean, like, but like yeah. the guy in the old days, they, they don't have to worry about that crap because the only problem they have is if they stay on the steroids high dose year after year, they're going to cause those structural changes to the heart yeah. that when they get older will set them up to things like congestive heart failure. Uh, but even there, there's a bright side. If they eat good, don't get obese, don't get high blood pressure, continue to exercise, they can prevent, even with the structural changes, they can prevent stuff like congestive heart failure from happening. But they have, the key is in their own hands. I wonder if, uh, if a guy came along who was a top title winner, somebody with influence, like a Chris Bumstead. I mean, that yeah. guy's got more followers. I was interviewing him at the Olympia on this thing called Meet the Olympians on Thursday night. He had literally all these kids standing there watching him. He had all these fans, like everywhere. He had a booth and his, his line went through the whole expo. I mean, this guy is the most popular guy. If wow. someone like him was would go out and say, hey, I don't use the drugs all year. I only use them, you know, a few months before the contest, you know. If someone with influence like that, maybe that could influence other people coming up. I think that would be a definite help. Yeah. You know, a popular guy like him, you know, because like you said, a lot of younger guys look at him, look up to him, you know. Yeah. They, they like his physique. I mean, uh, I remember after he won last year, uh, you might have, you guys probably saw these photos. There was photos of him posing with Big Ramey. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, they weren't shorts, I remember, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and if you read the comments underneath, most of the comments said, Bumstead looks like the real Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Most of the people preferred Bumstead's physique to Big Ramey, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the guy is, is very popular. And, and, and as crazy as it sounds, I know this sounds nuts, but even if Big Ramey himself who's, you know, no, I mean, you don't have to figure whether he's on drugs or not, but even if, if he made a statement like, like, like if he, for example, parroted Rich Piano and said, look, it's no secret that the guys in the uh, elite division of the pros use steroids, but if you're not going to compete, right. don't try yeah. and do what I do and the other guys do. You're yeah. only going to hurt yourself and you're going to harm yourself and possibly die. Don't do yeah. it. That I think would help. You know, it's like Yul Brenner. You remember the actor Yul Brenner? Yeah. He was a heavy smoker for years. And when he got lung cancer, he, he was dying. You know? So what he did is he contacted the uh, I don't I can't remember some health organization and he volunteered. He wanted to make a commercial warning other people not to smoke. Yeah. Do you remember that? So he 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 uh he, I think he did he have I think he he might have had a whole a tracheotomy or something. Oh, did know. he really? Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, he, and he said, he said, he said, he says, I smoked for years. He says, I, am, I, I admit it. He says, now I'm paying the price. He says, I am dying. Don't do what I did. Don't smoke. That was a simple message. You know, well, and, and, you know, you know when I saw the pictures of uh, Bumstead and Ramey next to each other, people were saying, well, Bumstead should do the open, but he's <laughs> going to have to gain like 20 or 30 more pounds. And I'm like, right. why? Why can't he just go in looking like he does now? Right. I saw that too. Because back in the day, Frank Zane was winning and he wasn't gaining all the size to get to beat these guys. He was going at his best. But you know what the funny thing is? Think about it for a second, guys. Let's say uh, Chris Bumstead took that advice and he said, he said, you know what? Let's say all this Adelaide, 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 Adelaide got, got to his head and he said to him, so, uh, you know, he said, you know what? I think I could, I could beat these guys in the, in the pro. I think I'm going to go for the, the, the open Olympia. Yeah. And, and he started to use the, the, you know, emulate their drug programs. Well, there you go. You know what? Yeah. He would look like shit. Yeah. You know what? Because in your mind, picture his physique right now. He doesn't have that heavy a bone structure. Right. So see that, you know, for a big man, Phil, you see how small his waist looks? Yeah. He, you know, Frank Zane had that too. They, they get that small waist. And narrow hips because they have a, a relatively small bone structure bone for that structure. height. Yeah. And, he, and so what what does that mean? That means he can't hold a lot more muscle. No, it's it's really lines. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. If he tries to build too much muscle, 
this is what Frank had. Frank experienced. He told me himself. Yeah. He, years ago, I think we talked about this, John. He decided that you know he was competing at what 180 or something like that. 185, you know? yeah. yeah. And you know, and he you know he became a pro, and he and his first impulse was I'm going to put on some weight because I got to compete against guys like Arnold. I got to get bigger. Yeah. I remember him telling me. He says, you know, I went to 205. That's it, 205. He's only five nine. He went yeah. to 205. He says, but I had a revelation. He says, I was in my car waiting at a red light, and I realized that my stomach hung over, <laughs> hung over, <laughs> the, fat hung over the steering wheel. He sure. says, I, so he says, I immediately went him back on the diet. He, said, he says, and I never entertained any thoughts of trying to get big. I decided to go in the opposite direction. Right. It is ripped and, and uh, fine-tuned as possible. And yeah. read, of course, the rest is history. He won the Olympia three times. But right. I mean, I, Chris Bumstead just doesn't have the structure. Doesn't have the structure, Jerry. You know? Right. I mean, I mean, I mean, a uh, big Ramey has a structure like a freaking elephant. I mean, he could put on a lot of. He, well, he, he proof is in the pudding. I yeah. mean, hundred pounds. Ronnie Coleman, a, a gigantic structure. You know, yeah. but I mean, this man does not have this. And it, it, no. all, I have nothing but respect for Bumstead. I'm not trying to put him down, but I think he he doesn't strike me as a stupid guy, and I think he knows in his head. That's that, why he's going to stay in that division. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, he will probably do what Lee Haney and and uh, and uh, Phil Heath. They'll probably just compete, win it. You know, I don't know how many times. Who knows? Seven, eight, nine times, whatever he wants. Then he'll he'll retire. By that time, he'll be such a legend that yeah. you know he can do whatever he wants. He can, you know he already has a supplement company, which shocked me. I, I was watching a video of him where he he made these videos of him preparing for the Olympia. And I'm watching it, and, and he says, uh, now I'm going to make a protein drink. And, he, and I'm looking, I'm singing, what the hell does it say on the can? Bummed, uh, what's it say? Bum, C bum. What's it, what? C bum. C bum, yeah. Yeah, C bum. Yeah, C -bum. And then, then he adds the C bum protein powder, and he adds two of the supplements also say C bum. Right. <laughs> I slap my head in the head, I son of a bitch, I'm watching an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But yeah. he, but you know what the funny thing is? He never mentioned it. He never said, well, these yeah. are my personal things. All he did is make sure he showed the labor. Right, right. Very Smart. subtle. Very subtle. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, so, you know, he could do something like that. I mean, I I, I think that's what the guy's probably going to do. He'll make millions, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, he'll just, he'll just, uh, he'll just continue to compete, you know, in, in year after year. And the thing is that, that uh, you know, uh, I don't know who, who, whether the other guys can get good enough because he is a little taller than like the guy you mentioned, you know, who has yeah. a, oh, that guy has one of the best, Phil, he has a back like you, that guy. What's his name again, John? Yeah, Ansley. Yeah, he has a tremendous. Oh, yeah, back, yeah. Beautiful back, uh, definition everywhere. Yeah. But, I personally think he's better. Yeah. That's my opinion. Right. Yeah. But you said the height does make a difference. Height, yeah. And that's what tipped it I, over to. Well, when, I, when I looked at the contest, you know, I, I said to myself, the only reason why Bumstead won, and again, not trying to put down Chris Bumstead, no. was his height, because yeah. uh, Breon looked to me actually a more complete physique. More complete, more complete, yeah. more complete. But he was shorter. Yeah. So he gave it to the taller man who gives the impression it's like an illusion. It is an illusion. He's yes. not that much bigger than the other guys. If you really look close, if you see his arm, he's not that much bigger, but because of the height, when he stands next to him, he looks bigger. It's yeah. an illusion. Yeah. It's and an illusion. then the judges judged him on that, and he won. Well, they always say a good big man will always be the big, good oh, short man. Sure. Yeah. Everything being equal, it'll go to the taller guy. Yeah. That's word. But I also believe, and I agree with Arnold about this, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, I think that the classic will come to the point where it is the most popular yeah. uh, bodybuilding event it will eventually greatly supersize supersede yeah. the mr olympia itself mr olympia will become like a niche freak thing whereas yeah. whereas the guys uh they'll be forced to pay these guys more money because these guys are going to get like like bumstead and brian they're going to get more and more popular because you know why people can relate more to them yeah. you, can sell, yeah. you can sell them to a mainstream audience exactly john yeah. when, you, when you saw those guys lining up to see bumstead it's because these guys are looking at him and saying, he's got, I want to look like that. Yeah. He's got a great yeah. physique. And you know what? You know, I, I want to look like that. And I think I can. Yeah. Yeah. 
when they That's look what at we had when we were younger too, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, right. But, when you, but when you look at Brig Ramey, who's, <laughs> who's going to go up and say, he, I, not, not that he's, he doesn't have a great physique, but who's going to go up and say, I can look like yeah. even an idiot. You know, four pounds. Pounds. No, oh, yeah. How many people can walk around with 304 pounds in that? Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a thing of nature, you know? Right. I mean, it's yeah. like having like, you know, six fingers on one. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Right. So this, this stuff, uh, I, I predict that the, uh, you know, this uh, classic. Now, now, what about men's physique with the board shorts? Uh-uh. I don't think it's going to get as popular. But the simple, oh, no. not, we've talked about this, and Phil, I've talked about, we've yeah. laughed about this, but call me old school, call me cantankerous, but I just can't, and, and, and all due respect, those guys look great. I mean, their upper bodies, they're very defined. I oh, mean, they some, look great, yeah. Some yeah. of them have fantastic, I mean, better than I ever looked, I admit it, but I just can't handle the board shorts. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to me, the lar the largest muscles in the body are the thighs. And the hardest, and the hardest training body part. Yeah. Exactly. Right, right. And and to cover them up in a competition, yeah. for what reason? What reason? What yeah. what what in other words, what are you trying to say? What's the message? You're trying to say, here, we're having these guys go on stage, they're wearing these uh, you know, surf up your shorts, whatever. You know, uh, uh, you know, these guys were actually just passing by, and we told them to come up on stage and talk. You know? <laughs> trying to make it look like 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 anybody can do it. So yeah, you know, I, so they're trying to key into the fact that. Well, I think that's kind of what the original concept was, but they got so big now they're just right, right. they're like bodybuilders with board shorts. See, that's where they made their mistake. In other words, they figured yeah. if they have, if these guys you know come up in board shorts. People will relate to them because they're not that big. Again, there's a limitation on the size also. Yeah. But they, but they have the great abs. And, and your people will see the board. Hey, they're not even wearing posing shorts. You know, we, we could do that, you know. And, and get I think those. it was the same thing with, with that division when it started. Yeah. The guys who were too muscular were marked down. That's yeah. right. That's but, exactly right. You know, but you know, as yeah. you point out, the nature of bodybuilding. <laughs> right. And it's it, Bill. You know this. We've all trained, you know. Right. You want to always get bigger. You always want to get better. Yeah. You don't want to stay the same. You got to show improvement. Improvement. And, you know, another look at the bikini girls for crying out loud. Yeah. Remember the remember the original bikini girls? Yeah. They looked like just girls on the beach. Some of them, I used to say, wait a minute, this woman doesn't even, she has a nice body, but she looks like she never touched a weight in her life. What, what is yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. Now, suddenly, I look at the bikini girls at the Olympia this year. They're starting to get muscle definition. Yeah, oh yeah. They're starting to get deltoids. Yeah. What do you think they're doing to get that, Jerry? Huh? What do you think they're doing to get that? I think they're doing a lot of clenbuterol and thyroid. And I would say something like primabolin, Anavar, the milder yeah, steroids. Probably taking Anavar. They're taking the, the absolutely at a minimal virilization effect. Absolutely, sure. Uh, well, there'll be no end to this. No. And again, I hope I'm wrong, but no. Yeah. I just don't have a good feeling, man. You know, I mean, I don't have a, I mean, you know, Sean, I mean, I, I got to tell you, I was shocked when I saw it. When Phil, you're the one who told me. Yeah. I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I wake up and there's a message from Phil Williams, Sean wrote in his diet. I said, what? I actually yeah. said it out loud. And my dog looked at me, what's going on? He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I was, seriously, I was shocked that Sean wrote, because I had no idea. I mean, I mean, geez, I mean, 40s. I knew he wasn't that old. No. Yeah, no. relatively young. Well, that's why that's why I mentioned those other Mr. Olympia winners who passed away at the beginning because uh, yeah, such, I'm one. Such a shock. What what I'd like to see, and again, this is out of some sort of uh, weird, you know, weirdness, but I like to see if they do autopsies on George Peterson mm -hmm. and 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 Sean uh, Roden. Yeah, uh, so this way we can know. It would be very helpful to know. It would be exactly for that reason, what, yes. You know, you know, what uh, what killed? I mean, they did autopsies on Rich Piana, and and uh, uh, what's his name again? Uh, uh, Dallas, maybe. Dallas, yeah. yeah. And, and I actually wrote an article I, in my applied metabolic disease. I wrote an article basically discussing the autopsies, going into details of of you know how the findings might have played a role in their death, and I, I think it's important to know what. Yeah. The, these guys died very young. And, you know, it's important to know what exactly killed them. Moves the stigma that going right now, where I'm sure a couple of jack-offs are going to go, I'm sure they're already doing it. Well, Sean Roden, he, he took was a heavy steroid user and the steroids killed him. You yeah. know, this 
talking at they're talking out of their ass. Right. Yeah. You're not going to know anything until an autopsy is done. You know, yeah. and, and yeah. a toxicology test. You know, where they find anything like Mike Menser. I remember his autopsy results. Somebody sent it to me. The man had 12 different drugs in his blood. Wow. So, three antidepressants, a muscle relaxant. He had, all, he had a whole bunch of drugs, 12 different drugs in his blood. And that's, that's what contributed to the heart attack. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, hmm. so, you know, what can I say? All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me for another uh, podcast. Uh, this was kind of a sobering uh, podcast, but I think it needed to be discussed. And uh, I did want to mention uh, or give some tribute to Sean Roden. Yeah. He was a Mr. Olympia winner and uh, it's such a tragedy that he died at such a young age. So. Thanks yep. for uh, giving me all your insight, Jerry and, and Phil. Hey, guys. Yeah, I just want to add that, you know, I happen to have, like I said, I, I knew Sean Roden, not a close friend like Phil is, you know, but I, I knew him. And I, I just want to say that for people who don't, didn't meet him, or the guy was a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. he, wasn't a, he, was, he was very humble. He wasn't a yeah. bragger. He was a, a down-to-earth nice guy who was nice to everyone. I just want to pe let people know that. And from what I understand, George Peterson was too, although he, he I, ne I never met him, but I understand. Yeah. So it's just a very sad situation. Very sad. Yeah. You know. Hey guys, I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this with a bit of humor since okay. we had such a, it, this is a tragic conversation we're having. Why does a dog lick his dick and balls? Jerry? Uh, to get to the other side. No. <laughs> <laughs> John? Uh, I think I heard this one, but I, I'm not sure. Well, if you heard it, you may know the answer. No, I don't remember. I don't remember the punchline. All right, guys, because he can. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll end it with that. A little bit of humor towards the end. A tragic yeah. conversation, but yeah, yeah, yeah that, 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 we needed to have it. Wait a yeah. minute, like, like well, Bruno over here is nodding his head yes in agreement. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me again. Uh, again, Jerry, your uh, me Applied Metabolics newsletter yeah. is uh, applied. on AppliedMetabolics.com. AppliedMetabolics.com, yeah. And, and uh, like I say, I got a lot of interesting things. I'm still working on this uh, thing about steroids in the brain, but it, I've learned a lot just from doing the research. It's really shocking, some of the effects. I mean, I, I, I don't think anyone reading this, a hardcore steroid user, is going to suddenly stop using it. But um, yeah. So, it's information though good information yeah, exactly but it's it, it'll make them let's say stop and think for a minute about what yeah. maybe what's up the line for them if they continue to do it let's put yeah. it out you know yeah very good okay, so that that's at appliedmetabox.com and i want to yeah. thank you and uh thank you phil also for joining us yeah and uh we will look forward to having you guys on the show again soon one day hey jerry i'll give you a call at the end of the week buddy sounds good phil okay good john thanks again i appreciate it okay All guys right. Thanks for joining me again on the Bodybuilding Legends podcast. We'll talk to you soon. And keep up that good work, John, man. I, I love your videos. You know, you're keeping the history of, like I said to you every time, I'll say it again. You are keeping the history of bodybuilding alive by direct, not this secondary crap where these guys make videos where they pull shit off the internet. and right. the, you're, 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 you're doing face-to-face -face with, the, with the people themselves. And you're yeah. keeping it alive, and, and I'm glad you're doing it. You're 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 a, a, a definite asset to the sport. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Guys. Okay. All take right. care. Okay, guys. Take care, guys.